In order to really appreciate what the serverless framework does for us, in this video, we're going to be developing our own API gateway endpoint manually by using the AWS console to put together this API endpoint that will trigger a Lambda function. So let's log into our AWS console and let's go find the API gateway service. Once you open the API gateway service, if you have never deployed a uh, API gateway endpoint before, you'll see a screen like this. We'll just click the get started button to get us started. We'll just go OK, and I'm just going to uh, accept this as a default uh, demonstration uh, that API Gateway gives us, just so we can move on and create our own. So I'm going to continue with fail on warnings and import, and just let it finish creating this uh, API Gateway for us. So what I wanted to do at this point is I want to click on APIs here. I want to go back to the beginning. I'm going to create myself a new API for us to play with. Create API. This one is going to be a REST API. Uh, we're choosing new API as the option. And I'm just going to name this a, give it a very simple name. Uh, it doesn't really matter what this is. At this point, I could give a description about what this API is. I'm going to leave it as is. And regional as the endpoint type should be fine. And let's go ahead and create the API. Once our API is, is created, we need to go ahead and add ourselves a new resource. So let's go open up the Actions uh, button there. Select Create Resource. On the new child resource page, we're just going to make a very simple hello resource that's going to return a very generic response to our API request. So let's just name this whatever you want to name. I'm just going to call mine hello. And then I want my endpoint to also reference the same of uh, similar endpoint. So I'm just going to make that hello as well. And with that complete, uh, the proxy resource we don't have to worry about at this point. This allows us to do uh, things such as allow our Lambda functions to rather handle the routing. Uh, we're going to ignore this for now, and we'll look at it probably later. And API Gateway Cores is a feature we'll look at later. Right now, we're not going to make any API requests from a browser uh, that requires us to enable cores. So I'm going to create resource. Once you create the resource, you should see that we have it available here as slash hello. However, we don't yet have an endpoint to actually make a request to. So now we need to add a method to that to allow us to actually query it. So this is where we go here. We say create method. And here we need to choose the get method. We're just going to make a simple get request to slash hello. And once we're happy with that, we just select that option. We don't yet have a Lambda function to integrate to, which is what we're going to do next. So for all, all intents and purposes, we are complete. Once we have our Lambda function created, we will then add it in here. So let's go ahead and create our Lambda function. To do that, let's click the services link at the top and search for Lambda. Once we open up the Lambda page, we just want to, we want to go ahead and create our first new function. So let's go ahead and click on create a function. We want to author one from scratch. We're going to create one uh, all the way from the beginning ourselves, but we do need to give it some kind of name. And I'm just going to keep it consistent with our API gateway endpoint and call this hello. All right, once we've finished uh, creating our function name, the runtime will keep as node 10.x. And we need to take a look at our execution rule here because now we need to decide on permissions for our Lambda function. Luckily for us, we don't need anything fancy. We're not doing, we're not accessing any other AWS services. Uh, we don't need anything uh, advanced here. We're just going to ask her to create a new role with basic Lambda permissions, which is more than enough for us. So let's go ahead and create our function. After a few seconds of waiting for the function to create, you should see a screen such as this one, where we can now continue to configure what our function contains. So let's just scroll down because we want to add in a, uh, uh, our actual code that is going to handle our hello. So you can see here we've got a function called exports.handler. The, the function has an event object. And this is what the interior of a Lambda function tends to look like. We have a function that receives an event object. With this event object, we can then do things like return responses, analyze the event object for data that might have come with it, like uh, data in our body or parameters in our URL. In our case, we have it. We have a very simple uh, API endpoint here that doesn't pass any data. So what we are going to do is just modify this uh, this automated message that, that got created for us. And we're going to say hello from serverless, just to make it unique. Once we've finished editing this, we can go ahead and save our function. And now that we've actually got this function, we can go ahead and look at adding it to our API Gateway endpoint. So let's go ahead and head back to API Gateway by clicking on Services and searching for API Gateway. Once we are back at API Gateway, our test demo API is waiting for us. So I'm just going to click on that. I'm going to select the get uh, method that we uh, had earlier. And now we can complete this Lambda function field and actually choose the Lambda function that we had before. So I'm just going to search for it by typing hello. And there is our Lambda function.
And now if I save, we should have an API gateway endpoint that allow that executes our Lambda function. And this will automatically add the permission uh, to our Lambda function to be executed by our API gateway. And with that save complete, we can now go ahead and execute our endpoint. By clicking on get here, we should be able to get to a screen where we can run a test on our API endpoint. So I'm just going to click there. And we don't have any parameters to pass to our API endpoint, so I'm just going to click the test button. And we should see immediately here is the response from our Lambda function, hello from serverless. So here we can see our API endpoint worked. We have an API endpoint that will return essentially hello from serverless. So this is how you would manually create API gateway endpoints and link them to Lambda functions manually. But again, here are some downsides. Unfortunately, with this method, there's no way for me to easily extract the configuration of my endpoint and the configuration of my Lambda function, as well as the link between them, in order to share that with another developer in my team. I have no way to allow him to create this on his, his end so that he can make edits, and he has no way to give me those edits back so I can incorporate them into what I'm working with to continue development on my side. What if you had uh, 20 endpoints and uh, 40 Lambda functions that handle things in various ways that you had to manually maintain and control through this AWS console? This might not seem like such a big deal now when you're just dealing with a very simple API gateway endpoint and a very simple Lambda function, but things can get complex really quickly, especially when you start mixing in things like Lambda functions triggered by other AWS services like S3, SNS, SQS, uh, DynamoDB, and the many, many, many other services in AWS that can trigger Lambda functions. For that purpose, using the AWS console in this way becomes rather limited and, and slow to use and very error prone because now you have to configure everything manually and hope that you don't break things every time you come in to make changes. The other side of this is that you cannot share any of this, again, with any developers. So when things get really complicated, everybody has to work off, off of the same console and you cannot test things in isolation before you put them through into your live systems. So obviously there's some issues here, and this is where we will now look at the serverless framework to see how this can help us rather manage these, these types of development practices in a cleaner and more portable way.